God knowing that you've done it already and we stand in your victory in Jesus name God even now anoint my mouth that I may speak only what you've said anoint the ears of the hearers that they may hear receive stand and perform the word of the Lord in their lives we thank you for all we bless you and we all agree and say amen There's too much at risk. Please pay attention to the graphics. A lot of times we live life playing craps. We roll the dice and we hope that we hit seven. We hope that we get something that's going to pay us. A lot of times we walk through life still lost and undecided about God. There is too much at risk for that foolishness. Do you know what you're risking with your choices? What's at risk with your priority level and its order? What's at risk? Because of your I can't live without. You know, there's a certain amount of things that we say we can't live without. You know, if I went in the average house of the American people and pulled out the microwave, they can't live without it. They microwave too much. People never think about it. We've converted wholeheartedly to a microwave. They now sell food microwavable. Where in times past, the only thing we used the microwave for was to warm up food we cooked. Now we don't even have to cook, just put it in the microwave. Microwave do it. That's one appliance that everybody can relate to and they say, I can't live without. What's at risk? Because of our daily routine. Let's look at the daily routine. The first thing we do is we wake up and we feed ourselves. The next thing we do is we look in on family or whomever is in the house with us. The next thing we do, number three, is we ready ourselves for work. Some take showers, some don't. Some go to work stanking. I mean, that ain't my charge, but I took mine today. I'm at work and I feel great. Number four, we go to work or school for eight hours. Let that sink in. Eight hours. You either go to work or you go to school. Number five, you come home, you eat, and it's family time. However long that might last. Number six. You relax. And you self soothe. Whatever that might be. Playing games. Getting on your phone. Doing whatever it is. During that time of your self soothing. You don't want to be bothered. No matter what's at risk. Don't bother me. When I'm in my game. When I'm in my phone. When I'm looking at stuff. When I'm looking at TV shows, don't bother me. No matter what's at risk, if the house ain't on fire, don't you come bother me. And if it is, if it ain't near me, leave me alone. Hmm. Then number seven, we sleep anywhere from four to seven hours. Some folks a little less, some folks a little more. Then we repeat one through seven again the next day. Here's the problem, folks. The time we devote to God, if any, is minimal and disconnected.
Okay, I'm, co I'm connected back. I just disconnected and just stood there. If I decided to preach, disconnected from God, watch this. You might not be able to tell. I might be that talented. But your life will not benefit from it. If I'm not connected to God, telling you the truth of God, my life, your life, will not benefit from the foolishness coming out of my mouth. If we are not connected to God, the question still remains. There is too much at risk. What are you risking? If today you are undecided whether or not you've given your heart to Christ, what's your hold up? I was just talking to one of my sons and I asked him, what do you think you're going to lose giving your life to Christ? Here's the misnomer that most people don't realize. When we give our hearts to Christ, you wait for instructions. Every instruction you need is already in the word of God. But most of the time, God is not going to disturb, hear me now, your routine. He going to let you continue to do what you do, work where you work. He's not going to pull you off your job. See, you're not me. I'm the preacher. My job and my employer is him. You, a different story. He's not going to pull you off your job. What he asked you to do when you give your life to him. He said, let your light so shine that men might see, watch this, your good works. And glorify your father in heaven. In other words, be an example for me wherever you are. I'm not asking you to take away nothing that you do. Now, when I say that, please do not take that and run. Well, Bishop, you said I didn't have to change. That's a lie. You got to change. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You no longer want to drink, sleep around, do things that you do, smoke. You don't want to do all that. You got new focus now. But he, he, God not going to ask you to change your job. He's not going to ask you. Now, he might get rid of some of the folk you call friends. Because they're not good for you. Not even in your regular life without God. Those people aren't good for you. Some of y'all don't realize that. Some of y'all think y'all know what's best for your life. Here's the thing. There is no quality time spent with God unless, hmm, pay attention folks, we're asking for something. Prior to the asking, we spend none to minimal time with God. But when we're asking him for something, oh, we know how to spend time with him then. We know how to cry. We know how to snot. We know how to fall out in the flow. We know how to shout. We know how to do all of that. When you're asking for something, what's at risk? I'm going to tell you all the risk factors in just a second, but... I need you to really get down the fact that the only quality time you think, let me, let me go ahead and throw that out there, you think, with God is when you ask him for something. Because you're sincere then. God, you know I need a new job. Oh, Lord, I'll serve you. I'll do what's right. I'll pay my tithe. I'll go to church, God. If you just arrange my schedule, people do that. Promise God all these things. Tell God what they're going to do. Some of them don't even tell they're going to do. They're not going to do nothing. They just won't. Give me, give me, give me, God. And what do you give God? Nothing. In exchange. And the sad part is, I'm so grateful that I'm not God. I really am. I'm going to tell you why. Because God keeps giving. He keeps giving. He keeps showing love. When you very clearly show hate. I don't hate God. You a lie. 
by definition of the Bible, the word of the Lord says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if I don't keep his commandments, am I showing him love? Everybody agree? That's a no? Absolutely. There's too much at risk. Let's go down the risk level. <laughs> First, family. Family's at risk. The example of adult behavior is learned from the adults we are exposed to. Let me reread that again. The example of adult behavior is learned from the adults in our lives. And sin is passed down. If you see something in your child you don't like, review yourself first. Make sure it ain't there. Most of the time it is. I'm going to tell you that right now. There's some things my daughter do. Whew. Started with me. She learned it from me. There's some stuff she do with her mama. She would not dare do with me. But she learned it from her mama. So her and her mama. Absolutely. When God said that I went. Oh wait. Hmm. Some of the things we dislike and despise in our children. Was planted by us. Not them. So what's at risk family? Go to Numbers 14, 18. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. So for all you folk who want to say, you know, their lives ain't right, they doing the, God ain't cleared them. He still hold them responsible. Listen, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Some of y'all would call that a generational curse. It ain't a curse. It's learned behavior. I'm indecisive in my walk. Came from my parents. They're indecisive. If they don't walk right, what example do I have but them? If they play duck, duck, goose with God, what, what example do I have but them? If my walk ain't right, I can't expect my children's walk to be right. Now, can my children go astray even if I'm walking right? Absolutely. But then I got a question. How long did it take me to get right? So what did they learn before I got right? Parents can't, can't, can't get out of it like that. I didn't raise you like that. How did you raise me, mama? How did you raise me, daddy? What did you? Uh, what's at risk? For us older folk, let me tell you what's at risk. Y'all ready? Your grandbabies and your great grandbabies. That's third and fourth. Grands and greats. That's what's at risk. Whether you like it or not, I can't do nothing with that. Go to Deuteronomy 5 9. See, I like to show you in two places. Because God said it multiple times. Deuteronomy 5 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Somebody will stand up and say, I don't hate God. I'm going to say it again. You're lying. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do what I tell you. Be obedient. 
live a life that you can stand before me and not be ashamed. Live that kind of life. Not the one that you think is the best life, the right life. Not that one. Get rid of that one. It ain't doing you right. What's next, Bishop? Wealth. W-E-A-L-T-H. Wealth. How is wealth at risk? If you don't want to run out, go to the only source of endless resources. Haggai. 2.8. This is God now. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. Said the Lord of hosts. The two biggest financial institutions. What do you mean institution, Bishop? Our dollar bill is backed by gold. Silver has a certain value as well. Both of them belong to God. So everything you know as in financial security belongs to God. And you're putting it at risk with your slowful decision making. How can you say that, Bishop? Deuteronomy 8.18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. What does it mean to remember God? Reflect, think about, console with, converse with, be in relationship with. For it is he, talking about God, that giveth thee the power to get wealth. That he, talking about God again, may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. I don't need you to read this in past tense. He dealt with the past, the present, and today. He said as it is today. In other words, when I speak, I speak in today. God spoke then and it applied now. So then he said, so that I can establish the covenant I swore to people way before you were even thought of. And I have kept my part of my word. I have continued my relationship with your family, the human race throughout the course of time. And I will not stop just because you was born and you're going to be hard-headed. No, it's going to continue, but it may skip you. Because if you don't want it, I'm not finna force you to take it. If you don't want it, God ain't going to force you to take it. You got to decide what you're going to do. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. Will it be God or man? You decide. You're sitting there playing, wondering what's at risk. Your wealth. Your wealth. Ain't nobody got enough money in here to retire today. If you do, raise your hand. Because if you raise your hand, we need to talk. <laughs> Why you say that, Bishop? Because I need to know what you did to get where you are. I don't want your money. I just need to know what you did to get where you are. Ain't nobody in here can retire today. Nobody. And live for the rest of their life comfortable. That means your whole life cycle will change. It's not, you're going to live the way you are. You, 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 I'm, Y'all know, Deuteronomy 8.18, we read that. You shall remember the Lord. The next thing that's at risk is important to a lot of people, your health. Exodus 15.26. There's too much sickness in the house of God. We are the children of the Most High God. 
We're not supposed to walk around with the sickness that he gave unto Egypt. He gave sickness and plagues to them. He said, I didn't reserve that for, hear me clearly, please. I didn't reserve that for the people I love. That was for the people who were trying to fight me. They came against me. They turned my people against me with their false gods. So I had some special reserve for them. But listen to what he tells us. This is why I say your health is at risk. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken unto, and I just put the unto that. I know it says to the voice. Thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the end thereof is destruction. We're not talking about what you see, what you think is right. We're talking about what God said is right. And will give ear to his commandments. Listen in obedience. Uh -huh. And keep all his statutes. Make sure you know how to be pleasing to God. Listen. I will put none of these diseases upon them which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that what? Huh? What what he do for you? Heal. Y'all hmm. say that like you like to be sick. What does he do for you? Heal. E everybody say it. What what is y'all talking? Heal. 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 Okay. Heal. Talk to me. I don't know why we scared of the word. We so used to sickness, we scared of the word heal. I don't know why. God manifests healing every day. Every single day. I've had people call me from out of state. God manifested healing. God moved. When I was in Pennsylvania, mm, somebody called me from Texas. They just diagnosed me with cancer. What? I just left. What are you talking about? I'm scared. <laughs> Can you pray for me? God said, do this, do this, do this. She called me back a couple of weeks later. They couldn't find it. Huh? What did you say? They couldn't find it. I, okay. And we give God glory. She's still here. Still doing everything she was doing before. Working. She's not a bad person, but the enemy thought he had it. Thought that sickness was going to. They couldn't find it. Only God can do that. He's the God that healeth. So for you to continue to walk in sickness is out. Please understand this. It's outside of the will of God. What you talking about, Bishop? I'm talking about the kind of sickness that takes you out. I'm talking about the kind of sickness that kills you. Is there a certain kind? Is there different kinds? Absolutely. It is. It is. Why would you say that, Bishop? Because I'm a beneficiary of certain kinds. What you mean? I got diabetes. Got diagnosed at 40. Guess what happened at 40? I slowed way down. That's what happened. And so the energy and the, that I was doing before, because I was still running at 39, chasing criminals down, fighting folk. I had a very active life. At 40, I was back home in Texas, and I slowed way down. I became a company man. <laughs> and diabetes said, hey, we've been waiting to get you, partner. Here you go. Can God heal it? Absolutely. But then I got to make life choices and changes. What's at risk? My health? Not so much for me because I trust God with my health. Absolutely. But I say that in relationship. Don't you come tell me you trust God with your health and you ain't got no kind of relationship. Don't, don't do that foolishness. Because God will show you what you do. He'll show you what you're working with. I work for him. So my benefit plan is guaranteed. I don't know about y'all. Let's look at the last. 
What's at risk? Salvation. Rescue. Total sustainment in God is at risk. It's too much at risk. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works lest any man should boast. Stop walking around here thinking that you've done so much good God recognizes it. You stop that foolishness that you've donated so much that God recognizes it. You've given so much God recognizes Stop that foolishness. The Bible says not of works lest any man should boast. That just gave you bragging rights. That's all. And so your reward comes from the people who hear it. That's where your reward comes from. It don't come from God. God said what you do for me, do it in secret. And I'll reward you openly. Y'all want folks to recognize your offering. Recognize how much you're giving. Recognize what you're doing. Recognize you giving somebody on the side of the road $5 when you had a 20 in your pocket. Quit playing with me. See it just as clear as day. You pass this person a $5 bill when you ain't got nothing to do in your pocket but had that $25 and you don't want to give them the 20 because that's too much. And you actually had a conversation with you. That's too much money to be giving to people. I don't know this man like this. Mm -hmm. And the whole time God is looking at your heart. He ain't looking at the denomination. See, when God has your finances covered, your wealth, you don't care when he moves your heart to give. Because you know he'll replace it. If he's responsible for it, you lose nothing. Salvation. Titus 3.5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Now that's the men of God saying that. Not us. See, they worked righteousness. They walked where they was going. They lived from house to house, place to place, casted in prisons and done wrong and, and, and endured evil because they were men of God. People of God. They... Y'all ain't gone through nothing. Ain't no discomfort going on in here. Y'all walked in the building. It was cool. Y'all ain't sitting in the heat outside. Ain't none of y'all hunger. If somebody tell me right now they hungry, be prepared for the bishop to look you in your face, scream at you, and go, you're lying. Because you're too big. Ain't nobody in here hungry. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of his Holy Ghost. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Not by righteousness of which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Not by anything you did but according to the mercies of the Lord. He saw fit to save us for his name's sake, not for yours. His name's sake. Matthew 7, 21. This is going to be an eye-opening experience for some when we come to the day that we stand before God and God has to be honest with us and truthful some of y'all feeling gonna get hurt cause you gonna sway up and down you gonna use a couple of words one of which I done told you I detest I tried nah, I won't hear that foolishness 
Another one will be, well, I did everything the pastor said. I won't hear that foolishness. The word of the Lord tells you to study to show yourself approved, a disciple, uh, approved unto God. Let me not put that in there. Approved unto God. A disciple, rightly dividing the word of truth that you need not be ashamed. I'm talking about you as an individual. It is your responsibility to have a relationship with God. Your relationship is not coming to listen to me. That's a part of your worship and learning. Your relationship is how much you converse with him on a daily basis. That's on you. That ain't on me. I can't miss a day talking to God. I can't. My life depends on him. Literally, figuratively, spiritually. I don't know how else to tell you that. I'm sold out. Can't nobody sell me a dog that won't hunt. It ain't working here. Every day. Got to talk to him. This morning talking to him, he popped off three, four messages. I'm like, what? What y'all don't know is, he'll have me write a message, and I won't see it again until two years later. I had a young woman call me and ask me, what does God have for me? I said, I don't know. God said, yes, you do. I said, what? He told me, go look in a certain color notebook. I ain't playing with you. Told me the color of the notebook. I pulled it out. He said, now turn here. I looked. I put the date and the time that I wrote it. It was 2019 when I wrote this. He said, take a picture of it and send it to him. I, uh, I said, God, I ain't even preached this yet. I didn't tell you to. I told you, take a picture, send it to him. That's for her. I said, now I understand why I got so many notebooks mm -hmm. with every other page got a message on it and I ain't never preached it. When I preach one, I write at the top, preached. I don't have recycled messages. I don't do that. Because they're not coming from me. They come from God. He don't have a recycled message. If he tell you something more than once, that's because you're hard-headed. Ain't because it's recycled or he running out of stuff to say. It's because you ain't doing it the first time he told you. Ain't no recycling going on here. He tells you in order not to lose you. I would that none would perish, but that all would have everlasting life. You don't want nobody dying and going to hell. He don't want to lose you. But you do have a choice. Huh? Salvation is at risk. What you going to do? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What that look like, God? He said, not everybody, not everybody going to make it in. He said, but the ones that will are the ones that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What you know about it? Some of y'all don't know what the will of the Father is for your life because you never asked him. Some of you don't know what the will of the Father is because you never opened his book, his autobiography. Yeah. Talks about him, his mighty acts, his power, his power and authority. You never opened the book. You open it when you come here to try to make yourself look good to me. I don't care what you look like. I ain't impressed. If you think in coming here impresses me, don't be a fool. Yes, the bishop just said, don't be a fool. Don't do that. I don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So stop trying to impress me. Impress God. Get in his word. You got too much at risk. Your family, loved ones, children, grandchildren, extended family, wealth, well-being, sustainment of employment. Too much is at risk for you to still be playing. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you're telling me. I'm, I'm going to give my life next year. That's going to be my New Year's solution. Didn't you say that last year? Didn't you say it two years ago? If that's your solution every year, somewhere between a slip and a lip, you're falling apart. 
simple transaction to get it right with God to, to do what he called you to do. Give your heart to him and let him decide the journey for your life to take. I promise you, or my name ain't John Wayne, that your life after Christ will be so much more fulfilled. The promise, the hope in the kingdom of God. But see, God did you one better. He said, no man has given, has, has, no, nobody, nobody who has given up husband, wife, children, house, home. For my sake, talking about for his, that he has not given it back to you in folds. Here, now, and to come. Look it up. You can't, you, you, you ain't gonna sit here and tell me you gave God all this and then you get to heaven and go, this it, God? This all? You're crazy. First of all, you're gonna be just awestruck with the streets of gold. Oh my God, this is real. That, that's gold and it's soft. You're going to be swept away with the odor of the cleanliness of God. I can imagine just the fresh breath of air. Not that our bodies will be present because they won't. But if I could imagine feels the lungs. I will have an opportunity to go for a flying lesson. I'll spread my wing. Huh? Yeah. I used to dream about that when I was young. That I could fly. If I could fly, I would go anywhere I wanted to. And in my dreams, I would just hover and float. I can imagine in heaven. John, go over to the third quadrant and bring me back a glass of water. Yes, sir. Let's get it fly and a drink of water for God would be me packing back a lake I'm just saying here you go there's too much at risk for you to be praying playing so let's pray father we thank you we bless you for this time and opportunity help all of our hearts to make a decision to follow you help our minds to be committed and obedient to your walk concerning our lives God we thank you that you have an individual plan for each and every person not that I have sanctioned off or ordained or called to be so, but God, you have your appointed journey for each and every person. Let them live according to your words, according to your will for their lives. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we bless you for your presence today. We give you glory, honor, and praise. All of us agree and say amen. amen. amen.